Today, I will talk about our new result on multi-party PSM. This is joint work with Luna from ENS. He will give the in-person talk. I'm Tianren, was supposed to talk in UW until last month and will join Peking University next year. So what is PSM? It means private simultaneous messages. There are K parties. Each has an input. Say the input space is of size n. There is a referee. The goal is to let the referee learn the output of a public function evaluating on all the inputs after receiving a message from each party. For correctness, the referee learns the function output. For security, the referee should learn nothing else even if he is computationally unbounded. To make this possible, randomness are shared among parties. Of course, the randomness is hidden from the referee. For PSM, we care about communication complexity. PSM is a very minimal model of secure computation. Things are extremely simplified. It's a good place to understand fundamental problems such as what is the cost of secure computation. It's also widely connected to many important crypto primitives. For example, you are familiar with Gabo circuit. If you think of it, Gabo circuit is essentially PSM where each party only has one bit input. In the literature of Gabo circuit and randomized encoding, the function to compute is typically a circuit, a formula, a branch program, etc. And we study how communication depends on computation size. Well, for the rest of the problem in the page, the central problem it's on the complexity of the worst function. So for the worst case function, we knew its computation size is about n to the k. Actually, just write down the function takes n to the k bits. The question is, may the communication complexity of the function be much smaller? So in a very similar model CDS, such cheap communication was recently achieved. And how about the communication of PSM? In the paper that introduced PSM, Fitch Killing now achieves communication complexity n to the k minus 1, which can be interpreted as all but one party's input space size. Recently, Bimmer Kuchilev with Nissan improve it to the square root of total input space size. In the literature, we also have more efficient PSM when the number of parties is small. How should we interpret this result? Is the case of small number of parties special? Or can they be generalized to larger k as well? Our result partially answers the question. We improved communication complexity to square root all but one party input space size. When k equals 2 or 3, we match the previous upper bounds. Actually, we, rep we reproduce the BIKK and the BKN constructions. For larger k, we improved communication complexity by square root n. Unfortunately, and interestingly, we only prove our construction for infinitely many k's, including all k no larger than 20, and we conjecture it works for any k. To show this in picture, uh, previously, the set of art uh, for general k is bkn, and for smaller k we have some more efficient ones. Our PSM matched previous works when k is small and he improved the set of art for large k. Okay, for the case of two-party PSM, as we just mentioned, the set of art is square root m by Bimar Ishai, Kumaris, and Kuchilevis. Uh, 
The earlier FKN achieves ON communication, which is worse but has a very nice feature. Only one party needs to send ON bits, the other party sends only a few bits. So compared to BIKK, FKN treats the communication capacity of one party for the other. In this work, we show an almost smooth trade-off. One party sends n to the eta bits, while the other party sends n to the one minus eta bits, as long as the, par the, the product is no less than n. We see the trade-off is almost uh, smooth because we only prove that trade-off for rational eta whose denominator is no more than 20. After seeing our result, you probably already have some questions to ask. Our work generates more questions than answers, and I will discuss some of them in the last slides. From these slides, I will give a brief overview of our construction. The first idea in the construction is that the function we want to compute can be rewritten as a multilinear function. This is ob obvious if you are familiar with notation. So this bracket means inner product. Capital F is the truth table of F. Xi can be converted into a vector, it's zero everywhere except for the number x, y coordinate. Finally, tensor product. The tensor product of two vectors is a matrix, and the tensor product of a matrix and the vector is a cube, and so on. Once have these notations, let's see how to construct three-party PSM. The input have been replaced by vectors. Every party sends the one time pad of its input vector. The master vector is sampled from shared randomness. What the referee can compute? The referee comp can compute this inner product. Okay, so let's expand it. It equals the sum of eight terms. The first is the target, it's, it's what we want to compute. The rest seven terms are what we call easy terms. Look at the first term in the last row. Party P1 knows X1, knows R2, R3 from the shared randomness, and F is public. So party P1 knows this term. Similarly, for every term in the last row. Okay. Then look at this term. The only thing P1 doesn't know is X2. So this term equals the inner product of something P1 knows and X2, similarly for the other two terms. So the sum of these terms is a polynomial with O-N monomials. As shown by Shaikushi Levis, to compute the polynomial in PSM model, the communication is no more than the number of monomials. That is, the sum of all green terms can be computed with communication ON. This explains why we call them easy. Once the referee learns the sum of the easy terms, he can compute the target by subtracting the easy terms from the term on the left. And it's easy to show that the referee learns no other information. Now let's try third party PSM. Again, every party sends one time pad of its input vector. The referee computes this inner product, which is the sum of 32 terms. Again, the first term is the target we want to compute. Uh, so, now look at this term. P1 knows everything about this term except for x2 and x3, 
So this term equals the inner product of something P1 knows and X2 tensor product X3. Similarly for all the following terms. Their sum is a polynomial with n square monomials. What about the other few terms? I have no idea how to compute them. I call them hard term and just leave them as they are. So we are stuck here. In the where can we make some progress? The answer is in the first line. Sending one time pad of xi only cost n bits, but our budget is n square bits. It's, as a general rule, it's always better to use up the budget. Given the n square budget, what can we send? We can send the one time pad of xi tensor product xj. Why is this within the budget? So it's also due to the work of Richard Kuchlevis. The complexity is no more than the number of monomial, the number of monomial which is n square. Okay. So given this new one time pad, there are many more terms the referee can compute now. And each of them equals the target plus some hard terms, plus some easy terms. Now, the most natural thought, maybe the referee can combine them in a clever way so that all the hard terms are cancelled out. And this is indeed possible. The linear combination of these referee, comput referee computable terms equals the target plus some easy terms. So this tells us how to construct a five-party PSM with n-square communication. Note that the target is multi multiplied by two, so we have to use a finite field where two not equal to, to zero. Okay. For general k-party PSM, the ideas are the same. First, send one time part of every tensor products of some input vectors as long as the budget allows. Then there are many terms that the referee can compute. Each of them equals the target plus some hard terms plus some easy terms. Then do linear algebra to cancel out the hard terms, which tells us how to construct k-party PSM within the communication budget. Uh, when k is even, the budget is, is not an integer power of n, so some extra work is needed. We let the computer do the linear algebra for k up to 20, and we did the linear algebra for k equals prime power minus 1. We conjecture that our method should work for any k. As we mentioned, some extra work is needed when k is even. In previous slides, the input is converted into a length n vector. Now we need to convert it into two length square root n vectors, and we do it in the most natural way. Split the, in the input into two numbers and uh, convert the two number, two number into two length square root n vectors. The tensor product of these two length square root n vectors equals the original length n vector. And uh, the rest of the construction is mostly the same. Now we quickly go through the two-party PSM. The ideas are almost the same. Say we allow one party to send uh, n to the b over k bits, and the other party to send n to the k minus b over k bits. First we divide each input into k pieces, and transfer each piece into a vector. Then the same observation, the tensor product 
of all these vectors, inner product with the truth table equals the target we want to compute. Okay. Then what we can send within the budget now, the left party can send the one-time pad of the tensor product of at most b vectors. Similarly for the right party. Given this one-time path, there are many terms that the referee can compute. And uh, each of these terms equals the target plus some hard term plus some easy terms. To the linear algebra, if the hard terms can be canceled out, there is such a two-party PSM. We let the computer to do the linear algebra for k up to 20. So, so far we ha I have sketched our results for k-party PSM and for two-party PSM with unbalanced communication. The results generate more questions than answers. The most immediate question, do our frameworks work for any k? We conjecture yes. I would be very surprised if the answer is no. The next question. Uh, I didn't write it down explicitly, but uh, the complexity actually grows exponentially on K. Why? Because our construction is symmetric. For example, the referee receives many one-time paths. How many? Exponentially on K, because we consider all symmetric one-time paths. Similarly, in the paper, we consider symmetric sums of referee, computer, referee computable terms and symmetric sum of hard terms and easy terms. Consider symmetric sum is extremely simplified the analysis so that uh, uh, we, we can go up to k equals 20. But uh, can this exponential dependence on k be removed? Maybe, yeah. Uh, as our example file party shows, unsymmetric construction might work as well. Okay. The next, why it works? Right now the answer is, okay, the framework gives me a uh, some system of linear equations. I did some linear algebra and find the system is solvable. But such an answer is very unsatisfying. And we are looking for a more intuitive answer. Or a better question to ask, why it doesn't work in some, in some cases? There's no clear reason why our frameworks will not yield more efficient PSM. For example, you might ask our two-party PSM framework to find the two-party PSM with communication complexity n to the 10 over 21, which is slightly smaller than square root 10. Okay, given this budget, the framework would find over 600 uh, referee computable terms and only over 100 hard terms. So it looks very promising. It's, it's probably easy to cancel out 100 hard terms from the 600 referee computable terms, but it doesn't work. Once the hard terms are cancelled out, so is the target. So what's wrong here? What is the reason behind? Finally, we are now satisfied with this upper bound. This work is a not fully successful attempt towards sub-exponential communication capacity. And the uh, sub-communication capacity is probably the moonshoot open problem in the PSM literature. That is. That, that is. Thank you for listening.